and I am live all right should we just set it to me let's just set it to me hey everybody welcome welcome to the live stream I know people will it'll take a moment for people to come on in and in the meantime in the meantime I will just say a little bit about how it's been going on so as people come in all right so recently I was on an RV trip I had never been in an RV before and it was amazing I went to a bunch of national parks I went to basically Utah I had never been to Utah before this the great state of Utah amazing thing about Utah is that everything there is high elevation like I, I feel like we were never below 4,000 feet elevation anywhere so that was interesting um, we went to six national parks Zion Bryce uh, Grand Teton Yellowstone and then down to Moab for Arches National Park and Canyonlands and so these national parks were incredible I know everyone is trying to just get out and do road trips while you know the coronavirus has limited things like has limited our lives and so people are doing trips so oh by the way if you have any questions while I'm talking please say it in the chat say hello give this chat a thumbs up I mean give the video a thumbs up anyway uh, the trip was great I was with my girlfriend and two other friends and the RV worked out great it was really cool overall and that's why I've been away for the past you know couple weeks and in the meantime what did I do right before the trip I was working super hard on releasing this program let me see right here it's the work from home fitness program I released this uh basically was a i worked my ass off on releasing this because i knew i had to go on this trip and so i shot off a bunch of videos in the past month before then and before then i was planning it all out you know what guys it's amazing setting a deadline for yourself if you want to be productive set a deadline okay i feel like nothing puts a fire on your ass under your ass other other than a deadline there's nothing quite like it they just work okay deadlines work so that's a really you know a really cool thing to do um i'm just gonna check the chat all right cool we got let me move this over here we got marty saying hello hi marty welcome welcome and i will go back to this page and medicus as greetings from Europe uh, cool uh, you want to know what kind of shoes I wear and if I like Feyus well uh, I don't have any particular kind of shoes right now that I, I love like I was wearing the what was it called the Z track shoes those are really good sandals overall um, I haven't tried the Feyus. I'm actually thinking about getting the getting the Feyus. There's a running joke that every time you see anyone wearing the Feyu shoes, they are doing flexibility work, and so they say that the key to flexibility is are these shoes, and that's the running joke for the past several years. Um, yeah, so I will try them. Maybe this year I will try them. But you know, like shoes are not my forte. I'm usually loving to be barefoot okay so if I'm at the beach or out at the park and I'm slacklining like uh, oh speaking of slacklining I've been leveling up on my slacklining I just posted these Instagram stories and I don't post much on Instagram but uh, I do post on the stories once in a while uh, let's see I just sh like for example so my recent workouts were this you can see here i'm doing mantle pull-ups these are this is basically when one ring is higher uh, higher than the other and it's a one-arm pull-up progression and it's just a fantastic uh, exercise and the other thing i'm doing here is turning around over and over and over and over and over on the slack line sorry i said that too many times but 
I've really leveled up in my slacklining. So basically I'm doing slacklining and then and then I do my pull-ups and then after I do my you know after I do my set of pull-ups I'll go back to slacklining. So just like this you're seeing in the video I'm doing my my mantle pull-ups again paired with my slackline practice, you know? So um, Marty's asking, did you film any yoga instruction during your trip? No, actually I didn't. Um, actually, I'll show these other clips while we are just showing things. Uh, no, I didn't film any yoga stuff. I would have loved to, but I like to prepare my yoga sessions in advance. So I did not do that. Um, I, I like to really lay it out and have a nice setting and there was no really good there was not even time to do that although I will say this at the end of our trip the last day we didn't have too much to do uh, it was mostly just like involved the last uh, day and a half involved us just driving back and so we were staying at this place called St. George in Utah and basically like I just there were the girls wanted to have a massage and then I said and they found a lot of different massage therapists in the area and I said well if there's a lot of massage masseuse places that means that there's a lot of yoga studios so I looked up yoga studios and I found a yoga class that I could just that was the right time it was around uh, seven o'clock and the girls and I, we went to this yoga class. But before I went to the yoga class, I will tell you a little bit about my, what I do. I'm very, very picky about which yoga class I take, who I take it with, okay? Because I'm a yoga teacher myself and there's nothing worse than going to a yoga class and then you're like, wow, this teacher sucks, you know? I might as well have just done it myself. Why do I go to a class, you know? So what I do, if I'm going to a studio I haven't been to before or I'm going to go with a teacher I haven't been with before, I will basically uh, Google their name and then look them up, see how I feel about them, you know, find their Instagram, find any social media that they have and see what they're about, okay? So this, I, I looked up a couple different ones and then the third one I found, the third yoga teacher I found, what was her name? Luciana, Luciana something, sorry, I can't remember now. But she, the first thing that came up was that she's a neurologist and medical, so she's a medical doctor. And I had never taken a yoga class with a medical doctor before because it's very rare. So if someone's a medical doctor, they're just preoccupied with you know their me their medicine their work there and how do they make the time to teach yoga is beyond me but that that intrigued me and i'm like i gotta take this class i've never taken a yoga class with an actual md before and then the class was fantastic it was hot yoga and it was just only an hour long uh, nice and short and sweet and it was a great way to reset the trip. So imagine we drove almost 3,000 miles, right? We hiked almost every day, a, a ton of hiking, right? And, uh, you know, my body was feeling pretty beat up, you know, doing five minute stretches here and there is okay, but I needed a full reset. So there's nothing quite like going to a yoga studio in a completely foreign town, a foreign space, out of the country always do that try to include a yoga class you know just drop into some yoga studio whenever you're somewhere out you've never been to before because it's fantastic like you'll get um the style like every culture in every town is a little different and they all have a different style like if i go to mexico the teachers there are have always been incredible they are like completely different people overall like they're just different okay and I get to learn so much more so um, yeah I don't know what else I was gonna say about that but take a yoga class <laughs> and oh you can see here I'm doing pull-ups again this is the same thing I had posted earlier and you know 
I was out on this trip for almost two weeks. That, that was two weeks of no pulling work, no pushing work, like no upper body work. All I was doing was hiking a lot. And man, it feels good to go back. And by the way, I've lost like uh, 11, 11 or 12 pounds in the past eight months. And I've been losing it very slowly. And man, everything were, everything is so much easier when you do bodyweight exercises and you are just lighter. Your strength to weight ratio just skyrockets and it's fantastic. If any of you are overweight and struggling with bodyweight exercises, get your diet in check. Try to reduce the number of calories you're, uh, you're eating overall. And you know everything will feel a lot easier your numbers will go up it's a lot more motivating you'll feel lighter on your feet your joints will hurt less you know so oh and by the way when we went on this trip with this rv trip we only stayed one night at an actual campground everything else we was on federal land you go a little off the road and then find some level ground and then it was nice so we saved a lot of money um we saved a lot of money not paying for an rv campground which is usually just a parking lot where you're next to a bunch of other rvs and you hear their generators and it's annoying so that was cool it saves money uh in that regard and also another thing that saves money is driving very slow your gas efficiency is far greater when you're going less than 60 miles an hour and it's slower sure but if you got the time why not you know so let me see what's chat what is the chat saying are you going to be doing an updated uh, rr explanation video it looks like the rr has been updated on our body weight fitness no i don't have any plans to do that it's just a huge undertaking it's a massive undertaking and you know the original recommended routine is just fantastic it's timeless it will forever be good and so if someone wants to dip their toes into it following my explanation video is still very valid the routine is just as good and it will always be good so right now I, that's not on the you know that's not a priority i know i get that asked all the time but by the way i discovered something recently one of the things I do is when I take a video, like let's say I'm, let's say I'm working out, or let's say I'm slacklining, right? I'm in the flow, right? And I got my headphones on and I'm listening to music, right? I'm in that flow and I'm really, let me see what's going on here on the, these videos. I'm going to just turn this off for now. And we will just put this. Okay. So one of the th what was I saying? I was saying that when you are listening to music and you're in the flow, right? And you want to take a video of yourself. What happens is you grab your phone, right? And you switch to the video mode and the music turns off because the microphone of the video takes over, right? And then all of a sudden you lose that flow you're in because all of a sudden it's silent. The music cuts off and now you you you're recording a video but it's completely inauthentic it's like it lost that charm and magic so i found an app called midio m i d e o which allows me to record my videos without the music stopping this has this is really cool overall this has been something i've always wanted as a i've always wanted the solution to this and i said let me look up if there's an app that does this and there is so, you know, M-I-D-E-O, that app, I, I paid like a few bucks for it, totally worth it, just for me personally, so that, you know, when I'm taking video of myself, like, I can keep listening to my music, and I'm in that flow, and it's really good. Hector, Hector Cabrera says, hey, it's been a while, you're one of the guys who got me started on calisthenics, you rock, man, thank you, thank you, man, I'm Thank you. I thank you for the support and the kind words. So, well, let's see. What else was I going to say? Um, another thing is that, so, you know, I used to go to Muscle Beach all the time. 
and since coronavirus hit, Muscle Beach has been off limits. They even fenced the whole perimeter, okay? First, they just removed the rings, okay? And then people came and set up their own rings on the structures and said that one day the police came and said, you got to take it down. Okay, and then the next week they put a goddamn fence around the whole perimeter. Okay, so you're supposed to stay indoors. You're supposed to like what not interact with people. I mean, I get it. Coronavirus could be dangerous, dangerous to what people whose immune system is awful and they're unhealthy to begin with for the most part. Right. Okay. But at the same time, you know, you're closing down parks. You're close. Like, I don't know, guys. 2020 is a shit show. We all know this, right? Um, and, I, and I'm having trouble here because I'm having trouble locally. Like I go to my local park and I try to find, I go to my local park and I, you know, set up my rings. I set up my slack line and I do my work, but like I'm surrounded by old people, people who are just walking around and you know, I need to find my people again because now with Muscle Beach being off limits and gone, like, uh, it sucks, guys. It's try to find the people, like minded people in your community. Okay, that's what I have to do now. Uh, or maybe just start your own community. I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna be doing that. I might start like, Maybe one Sunday I'll say, hey, I'm going to do a meetup at a local park and whoever's down to work out with me, maybe, you know, we go, we all meet up for an hour or two and just, you know, work out together. I don't know. It's come to that point where I feel like we need to band together in new ways. This isolation business is unhealthy in so many other ways speaking of unhealthy um what's chat saying uh bu, bu, bu. thanks for your technique videos and your work on reddit you're welcome ricardo you helped me change you helped change my whole approach to fitness good good i'm glad to hear um yeah Okay, so uh, what was I saying? Speaking, I said, speaking of unhealthy, you guys, if you have Netflix, watch The Social Dilemma. Let me see if I can. The Social Dilemma, the Social Dilemma was basically it's a documentary for an hour and a half, and it is really good. Like, it says a lot of things that I knew already, but it's possible you might not know some of these factors. Basically, uh, you probably know this already, but whenever you go on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, um, Pinterest, Reddit, all these things, they are all designed, they are engineered, there's a lot of social engineering in it to make you come back to it, right? There's an addictive quality to it, and that's programmed in there on purpose to keep you coming back you make a post you get likes it gives you dopamine feedback right all this stuff i mean this is not news but i'm just saying it because this is how it works and all these al algorithms have been created by programmers like uh basically they've imp like programmers have implemented machine learning to learn what you know from from you your data like your habits what you search for what you're looking for they will customize the news feed for you right so there's a lot of issues with this because now they've opened up a pandora's box meaning like once you've opened this thing like once you've started this thing you, you can't really close it back up so now you have all these machines and computers and people uh, being fed news and you know information that is addictive and keeps them coming back but there's a lot of issues this is not just like the issue is not that you're being entertained on Instagram the issue is that fake news articles conspiracy or conspiracy theories you know which have no basis 
trend six times more than real stories. And sorry guys, but I, I don't have much faith in humanity, humanity in the sense that a lot of people, because a lot of people are lacking critical thinking skills, okay? There's a lot of ignorant people out there and stupid people think they're the smartest whenever they read conspiracy theories because it makes them feel smart like oh i know the, why this is happening because you know uh, this 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 and it's like the most complex answer right when o occam's razor says the simpler answer is most likely the right answer okay and so what happens is you have fake or uh, you know invalid information being fed to people and th this is what's trend this what starts trending and gets picked up faster and this is one of the reasons why you, we have such great political divide we have extreme polarization everything is very binary everyone is thinking very black and white you know you know oh def oh cops are bad okay defund the police like let's go to that extreme and get rid of all the cops no it's like who are you going to call when you call 911 you know the cops are going to help you in certain circumstances and they're not going to help you in other circumstances right the reality is everything is like on a scale and it's like uh, it's not black and white but this polarization and everyone being so extremely you know far-sighted on one to the other is causing chaos it's causing emotional distress and these social media sites are fueling it and so basically the social dilemma documentary was basically saying that if we don't change anything if we don't like make major changes to these programs ethic like from an ethical basis like our democratic governments are probably going to fall apart climate change will definitely not be fixed because you have these companies that are these companies these tech companies have to keep making money right they have a obligation to the shareholders to keep turning a profit so they're going to keep this model going. So, you know, climate change is not being solved. Uh, political landscape is being like messed up. Like we are living in turbulent times. And you know how change is accelerating? Like change, the concept of change is getting greater and greater. Well, it's going to keep accelerating faster and faster so if you are not happy with how fast things are changing right now i'm sorry but you have to keep adapting okay you have to keep adapting and also i think the antidote to all of this is meditation okay oh cursed said the, Dun the dunning kruger effect that's right the dunning kruger effect is exactly what i meant Dunning Kruger effect. Let's look it up. It's basically it's the cognitive cognitive bias in which people with low ability at a task. So people with low ability, people who are not competent, overestimate their ability. Okay, and uh, this is like a form of illusory superiority, right? And and it's the opposite. The people who are really smart, right? They no, they think that they're not smart enough, okay? And the people who are actually really dumb and incompetent, uh, they are, they think they're so smart, okay? And this, this is, uh, what was I saying with this? Oh, I was saying the antidote. I believe the antidote to all of this, the, this phone that you're, you know, it's like attached to you, right? You can't go for long without this phone the antidote i believe is meditation okay meditation and when i say meditation you don't have to be seated in like the lotus position and like have like a sound bath going on and no meditation is very simple try just doing nothing don't look at your phone don't look at anything. Just sit there and literally do nothing. Okay? When was the last time you literally just sat there 
and did nothing. And when I say nothing, I don't mean like sitting on the couch and watching TV or, you know, you know, just scrolling through your, you know, news feed or something. Like, sure, you're physically not doing anything, but your brain is still working. I mean, literally just sit there, don't listen to me, turn off all your electronics to just and just like do nothing. OK, and if you want a breathing meditation, I actually have a. Let me see. Meditation. So I have a video here called meditation made uh, simple. And easy. And I'm going to post this link to the in the chat room. Sorry, guys, one sec. So because I feel like meditation, this is like this is probably like the most important thing you can do. The antidote to all this chaos around us is meditation. OK, so basically what I'm saying in this video is inhale through your nose and when you exhale pretend that if there is a candle flame underneath uh, underneath the your nose that it would barely flicker okay so basically you're inhaling through your nose and exhaling really slowly and each breath you take this will become your breath will slow down more and more and you know there's a shitload of meditation techniques right you can just focus on the air passing through your nose. You can just focus on anything. You could just like count 10 up to 10 breaths. You know, I'm going to just do nothing and just count how many like 10 breaths. Like it doesn't have to be like an hour long. It could just be five minutes long. You can just set a timer. I'm going to do nothing for until my timer on my phone goes off after five minutes. Try doing that. Okay. Because that is what's going to set you apart from everyone else. All right. People who are like, you know, people who are just don't have any control over themselves and are just slaves to their phones. Um, and, you know, people say, oh, they're going to come out with vaccines that are going to have chips in them and they're going to track us. Listen, guys, they don't need they don't need to do anything fancy. They're already tracking us with our phones. OK, my microphone is listening to everything I'm saying. If I say, hey, Siri, you know, it's going to say it pops up. And it's like, hey, like it already knows I want something. It's always listening. There's these phones are already the tracking device. Anyway, so uh, I'm rambling on a lot, but I want to get a lot of thoughts out because it's been a while since I've talked to you guys. And I'm just going to read the chat. Defunding the police is about taking duties that they aren't trained for away from the cops and creating jobs so that there are more social working workers. Cops aren't trained to do 80% of the things they do. I agree with you. I agree with you. There needs to be a restructuring, okay? Obviously, you got to hit them where it hurts, in the, in, the, in the pocket, in the money, right? Now, we have major issues in regards to that, right? The whole militarization of the... The whole militarization of the whole police departments overall... And the amount of money that they are getting is ridiculous, right? I know. But I'm not a politician, and I don't have much faith in much change happening for the better. I'm sorry. Like, I, I, I don't know, guys. It, it's just, the world is crazy. But the one change you could make is change yourself, right? And change the people around you by being a leader, okay? Lead by example. You don't like how things are working? Okay. At least make the change within yourself to uh, to make that you know improvement or whatever we're talking about, right? Now um, let's see what else. Hi, Ans Amanat. Uh, the hardest part is clearing your mind of any thoughts. Yes, and you don't have to actually clear your thoughts. You don't actually have to like clear. Like, you don't have to, like, clear it completely. You're never going to be thoughtless. It's just the idea of meditation. Just sit there and do nothing. When was the last time you did literally nothing? Don't drive your car. Don't look at your phone. Whatever. Just do nothing. And thoughts are going to come up 
they're always, your brain's going to be working. It's working 24-7. Even when you're sleeping, you're dreaming, you're thinking. Um, and, there, and that's fine. Just let the thoughts go by. Don't pay any attention to them. Let them just keep going and don't put any attention to them. You know? So, anyway. Um, I have a question here. Uh, about the recommended routine, it has a lot of benefits like strength and etc. It's so balanced and good, but for hypertrophy, is it good for that regard for someone who wants to get big as a beginner? So in my, if you're a beginner and you want to get big, in the beginning, just stick to the first, stick to the basic template of three sets. Okay, like you're going to do three sets of each exercise. Now, if you are at some point, you're, you know, when you're going to get used to this program, right? Easiest thing I could say to increase the hypertrophic effects, and by the way, hypertrophy, guys, refers to uh, building muscle mass, okay? It's a fancy word for growth, okay? Trophy, hypertrophy, is, it just means growth, okay? So, and I also have a, and so th the easiest thing to do is to add a set, so do four sets of everything, okay? Make that small change. It's not a small change. It's a big change, but I mean, it's a simple change. And that could be dramatically effective for gaining more muscle mass, okay? Uh, at the problem with that, however, is that it will cut into your recovery. So, because you're doing more work, so it's going to take a little longer to recover possibly. So, um, also the risk of injury might be greater. If you're having a bad day or you feel your joints are not doing well, just like stop right there. Okay, listen to your body. Don't follow a cookie cutter workout plan just because it says do this, this, this. Listen to your body. Your bo you know your body better than anyone else. You know it better than the doctor. You know it better than anyone else. Okay, and I was going to say, uh, speaking of hypertrophy, I do have a hypertrophy program which works like really well if you want like a hypertrophy specific uh, workout uh, sorry it was right here I will post the link in here and this is a uh, more for advanced users advanced trainers and uh, trainees um, but it works very well okay now back to me Oh, and uh, I have a couple more questions. I have a tiny bulging disc at C6, which is your cervical, uh, cervical C stands for cervical spine, and 6 is 6 vertebrae down. As a result, my right arm has had slight nerve sensations. I also have upper cross and lower cross syndrome. I have been getting chiropractor adjustments. Do you recommend that I continue my calisthenics training while I work on fixing these issues, or would I be hurting myself more because of muscle, because of balances or imbalances? Uh, so that is something that you should ask your doctor or your physical physiotherapist if you have one. Uh, you know, if if these like in again, you know yourself best. Okay, if doing these exercises let's say push-ups, pull-ups, rows, and dips are not hurting you, there you, you feel like you feel fine, okay, then keep doing them, all right? If it's not causing like numbness and, you know, you don't feel like shit afterwards, then I, it's probably fine. If like one of the exercises is causing like, a, is aggravating you, then cut that exercise out and just focus on the others, all right? It's very simple overall, but again, if you're really not sure, or you think like there's something major going on, go to a doctor and try to find a doctor that is a little more sports oriented. I always say find a sports oriented physiotherapist because these people are just a lot more capable in answering your questions in, re work in regards to working out. Because a lot of doctors themselves don't work out like which is sad, you know, but that's the reality. <clears throat> uh, 
Aryaman is saying, I'm following the old recommended routine before, because I find it simpler and faster. Do I have to switch to the new one or is the old one worth it? So I talked about this earlier in the stream and I basically said that the old recommended routine is timeless, classic and perfect the way it is. Okay, the new version is great as well obviously there's like things that make it a little more efficient there's a little more leg work but overall the old one is fantastic you can do it for 20 years it's like it's the same human body guys like the body's not going to change okay and the routine was steeped in uh, it's a very like credible routine right and it will forever be good it's a good template and you could take this template and modify it in the future for what other specific goals you have okay so um, two questions i'm afraid to roll uh, to forward roll out of the handstand to wall pos to wall position any tips um so mm, forward roll doesn't require any it doesn't require anything other than just doing it uh one thing i would recommend is tuck your chin so like you're in the handstand and you're gonna roll out you're basically just gonna bend your elbows and tuck your chin in and you'll just roll roll out okay so if you don't have the strength to like lower yourself slowly you don't have to like lower yourself that slowly but if you want to gain the strength to roll slowly I would recommend you do uh, pike push-ups, decline pike push-ups. And if you go to ontronic.org slash pike dash push-ups, you will see how to do pike push-ups correctly. And this will basically give you the handstand push-up strength and build a nice level of strength so that you can, you know control the descent into the rollout even though you don't need strength but it will gain you confidence as well so yeah um what other question i do zumba for my cardio any opinions on that cardio do whatever is fun okay if you enjoy it do it stick to it i love swimming i love surfing i love skiing it's weird how all these things i love slacklining I, I it's funny how all these things start with the word letter s <laughs> and um you know and i love bicycling for example like i alternate between all of these and why do i do this because it's fun okay i don't like hiking as much for example so like i'm not a big hiker i'll, I'll never go on like a 10 15 mile hike because some people will you know hike from canada to mexico it's not me i won't do it but if you love it you enjoy it you find it fun if you find it fun that means you'll come back to it if you come back to it that means you're going to be consistent if you're consistent then you're you're great you're better you're you're that's that's the consistency is the most important thing okay uh someone's asking what's the best way to develop self-discipline for me personally uh it was I have to make a to-do list. So here is my to-do list for the day. And I had a, you know, like most of the things are crossed off already. So you can either make a to-do list in the morning. A lot of people recommend you make one the night before you sleep. And then your to-do list is ready. So one of the things I do is I'll make the, I'll write down everything I need to do. It could be like anything. It could be work related. It could be like kitchen related. Like I, I gotta, you know, go buy almond milk, let's say, or, you know, whatever. Yeah. Like I'll list everything I need to do. Right. And then I'll categorize them. Like I'll make, I'll, that would be the draft list. And then I'll just make another list that like kind of organizes it. Like this is the work related stuff. This is the, I need to get the toilet paper list, you know, and, um, and then I will, prioritize them like number one number two number three okay i'll just literally write numbers next to them try to do the thing that is the most important which is usually the thing that you have the most resistance to doing first okay 
when you get that thing out of the way that you had the mo- you know you don't want to do the thing you are procrastinating the thing that usually is the most important thing to do do that first and the rest of your day will be a breeze cuz you know though that those other little things those less daunting things are going to be a breeze okay so that's my that's my tip for self discipline and just like keep that habit of making a to do list To-do list is what keeps me like uh, keeps me in check because like it's very easy for me to lose my attention span. Uh, you know, our attention span is like a goldfish, right? It's very short, like three seconds, right? So, <laughs> uh, which meditation will help improve, by the way. But uh, anyway, if I have this list in front of me, it keeps me on track. All right, it's like right in front of me. It's not a phone and I don't like using my phone as a to-do list because you know a notification pops up and then you know you were looking at your list and then the notification pops up and then all of a sudden I'm like looking at something else and then maybe 30 minutes passes and then I go back to the list. No. This list paper does not have any distractions associated with it, okay? Keep this right in front of you, right in front of your keyboard wherever your desk is right in front of you and like the satisfaction gratification of crossing things off is fantastic all right so let's see that was my answer and i have another question i'm following the freeletics app and after two months i can't do one knee push up is something wrong with me and what can i do well first of all forget knee push ups do um incline push-ups and let's look that up here is that video it's about in this video i teach you how to do push-ups properly and then i say how to do what you need to do if you can't do push-ups which is starts right here basically i say elevate your hands and then basically just do basically just do incline push-ups just like that you see like my hands are on top of a bathroom counter and you know this makes it much uh you know and don't do it that way with the elbows flared out that's what i'm saying i'm going to put the link to this video which has 2 million views um and tag adisa push-ups So yeah, stick to incline push-ups and then lower the incline over time, and you'll get it, man. Just, just stick to it. Just do it a bunch. Three sets of eight. You know, build that up. Um, I'm gonna stop with that, and then let's just go to a blank page. All right, hey, Antronic, big respect for you. Have you ever dealt with muscle imbalances in some exercises like push-ups? squats and ab wheel rollouts i don't feel my right side muscle working um i mean if it's not so a symmetry imbalance between the left and right is normal first of all it's common it would be actually weird if you did not have an imbalance okay so first of all there's nothing wrong with you in that regard if it's extreme then you just have to be more mindful about you know like if your right side is weak like push harder with the right okay but if it's not nothing extreme uh don't worry about it and just because you don't feel it doesn't mean it's not working does that make sense take a video of yourself always take videos of yourself doing exercises because you when you review it you'll see things that you didn't know you were doing and you could fix your form But if your form looks okay despite you not feeling some you know feeling a muscle or side it's okay all right so yeah um oh evgeny has a question and he gave 5 bgn what is bgn bgn currency bulgarian lev Thank you from Bulgaria Evgeny. Thank you. <laughs> cool. Um what was, what was the question? I've been doing your rings routine for a month and I'm wondering how long until I have to think about switching to a hypertrophy routine. 
So you've only been doing it for a month. It really, they're completely different routines overall. The rings routine has much more skills associated with it and it will build the foundations for all rings related exercises. Okay, and it will build straight arm strength and it will build, you know, rings skills. So you'll master your skin the cats, support holds, shoulder stands, all these things. And hypertrophy is not the main focus for it, even though you will gain muscle doing it because you are working out still. <laughs> uh, however, the hypertrophy routine if hypertrophy is your goal and your only goal um, you could switch to it whenever you want however it is a more advanced routine it's more complex and it does you if you have a pair of rings it works really well for it however it does not build any skills there's no skills in, involved with it it's just like more more so it's just bent arm exercises there's no straight arm uh, strength work so it's just a different routine okay like i hope that answers the question they're just like they have different focuses and you could switch to one or the other whenever you want but i would recommend that you stick to the rings routine uh like until you make some sort of significant progress and you know you know the rings routine that they are talking about. Oh, where is it? There we go. Rings. It should work. Wait, why isn't it loading? Sorry, guys. Oh, there it is. Oh yeah, get rings routine. Um, I'll put the link here. Rings routine. This is what. Uh, Evgeny was referring to all right so it's been about 50 minutes in how many people are here anyway let me uh, do a quick little review 28 people cool thanks guys remember to you know give a little thumbs up so important <laughs> I'm being a little sarcastic it's not that important but thank you uh, okay well, I have a bunch of questions here. Um, okay, let's read it. VS Tape is asking. There's a video on YouTube about a guy who showed his transformations using the recommended routine. It got a lot of attention. He said he's using the recommended routine plus tips from the book Overcoming Gravity. Do you know why he needs stuff from that book even though he's just doing the same routine? I don't know. I mean, he probably just got a lot of tips from there. Maybe progression tips. And I like that book. It's like the Bible of calisthenics. <laughs> uh, it's it's like a reference manual to me. But I don't know exactly which tips he's talking about. I mean, it could be anything, guys. Like, it could be... I mean, the most important part of the transformation is putting the work in. Being consistent and working out. All right? So that overrules any other little minor optimization that you can put so yeah you um what other how light should my mayhem's asking how light should my yoga session be on a rest day is there a rule of thumb or something not really your yoga session could be heavy on a rest day too i mean if it's mostly like flexibility stuff single leg balance you know stuff like that it's you can make it as hard as you want. It should not interfere with strength training, for example. <sighs> so, there we go. It's almost an hour in. And what else we got here? Adisa is asking, thanks. I know about your video and I could do the inclined ones, but not that knee variation that the app gave me to do. I'll just keep doing the inclined then. Got it yeah i mean lower lower the ink like there's levels to the incline right so maybe you just get like you're at the point where like you get like yoga blocks or you know a bunch of books stacked up and it's only a six you know your hands are elevated by only six inches maybe you're at that level 
And that means you're going to be very close to actu the actual push-ups. Just like gradually keep working them down, okay? Um, and yeah, as Johan says, uh, don't give up. <laughs> the rings routine is great, especially when you see progress. Best money ever spent. Thanks, Johan. Thumbs up for me. Yay, thumbs up. Okay. I'm up to 24 thumbs up with 34 people watching. Okay. Hypertrophy is not my goal. Fun skills are, so you'll stick to the recommend, to the uh, rings routine. Got it. Okay, great. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Any tips on, on getting rid of lower belly fat? Okay, uh, this is a common question. Basically, um, you cannot target specifically like you know I want to you know I want to lose mo like lower belly fat. It's just not going to happen. You just have to eat less calories than your body is burning and where the body decides to take the fat from is up to your body and its genetics okay uh, it's you can't really target it in a specific matter what usually happens is you'll lose fat off your face and then your shoulders and then your belly area and then your glutes and thighs last that's usually what happens okay and then of course with men and women it's a little different like uh, the most stubborn fat on women is going to be the glutes and thighs the most stubborn fat for men is going to be the belly the abdominal area but you cannot control where the fat in what order like how it's going to be lost all you could do is just eat at a slight deficit over you know like a long time just wait like just just keep at it okay and i've lost 12 pounds in the last eight months and you know that's for me i reached like a new level of consciousness i guess in regards to my what i'm putting into my body i've become really sensitive not like in any bad way just like i've become much more mindful of what i am putting in my body basically before i eat anything i question myself do i really want this okay do it's like do i want this if the answer is not like a full wholehearted yes i'm not eating it okay and it makes me question what i actually want and as a result i've been eating like appropriate amounts consistently and, and without counting calories which is new for me i've always counted my calories because, because it's helped counting calories helps make it very obvious and clear how much i'm actually eating and now i you know after doing that for years on and off I've reached that level where I know how many calories anything is. <laughs> I know the macronutrient ratio of every food out there. Like I know what's the fat protein uh, carb ratio of every food out there. And, and so what, uh, what's, what's happened now is that that information has all assimilated and now I'm able to make much more conscious lifestyle choices where like I'm consistently eating or not eating over overly consistently. So that has been a really good change overall. So I rambled on a little bit too long about that little lower belly fat question. Um, VS Tapes asking, is this, will this video be on the channel later? yes uh it's gonna be kept on there uh tj is asking what kind of music do you like and do you listen while working out absolutely i listen while working out i have bluetooth headphones and i just uh i have like a spotify account i also have like a bunch of songs on my phone and i love brazilian music you know brazilian music is my jam i love i love brazilian music i also like anything funky um Anything with like a good catchy beat. There's all, but I listen to all sorts of world music. I can't really 
uh, say what I like or don't like. Like it's, I like a lot of things though. Uh, yeah. Have you uh, considered getting into rock climbing? It seems like something up your alley. Uh, I've tried it a few times, Kevin. I've tried it. I like it. I enjoy it. But I haven't gotten into it to the level of doing it consistently. I, maybe I will one day. Maybe I won't. I don't know. The rock climbing gyms near me require a bit of a drive out. Not like too far, but it's not like super local. If it was like a five minute trip down the street maybe i would go much more consistently but if it's a little far away it makes it not so doable you know karn is asking i love how chill you are what do we need to exercise to be so chill like you <laughs> good question karn i don't know man just relax what i said in the beginning of this whole thing was basically i said I think we all need to meditate more often. Even if it's for three minutes, five minutes, ten minutes. If you're doing ten minutes, it's great, in my opinion. Ten minutes is great. And who the hell doesn't have ten minutes? You look at your phone, you know, you look at some bullshit stuff on some app, some social media app, and like 30 minutes has gone by, right? This shit is the time killer, the life killer, guys. This is fucking zapping our life, okay? Be aware that this phone is eating away at your life. Time is something you will never get back. These years are passing you by and you, you know, carpe diem, like seize the day. Don't seize the day on your phone. Like, it's not cool. Go out there, do something with your life lead by example if you want to make a change in the world do it change yourself first and other people will you know if you're passionate about what it is that you're doing other people will see and recognize that passion and uh, get attracted to that and then that's how you can make change in the world right hopefully right so um things like that karn um Jacob is asking, where are you from and what app workouts would you recommend in addition to LSITs? Oh, there's so many app workouts. By the way, I'm Armenian. I was born and raised in Los Angeles. Uh, even though I have an accent, I just grew up speaking Armenian in the house. Yes, hi, Rengu Khosim. And um, what app workouts would I recommend? There are so many exercises, man. Uh, like, I have a whole, like, by the way, I have a whole smart core program which i can just share the link to where is it this is the smart core program and basically do i have like a no i don't have the details here but it has like 70 progression exercises there and basically we have we have reverse crunches I have videos on reverse crunches, hollow holds, dragon flags. Those are really good. Okay, dragon flags, I have a video on dragon flags, are fantastic. And then, of course, you have plank, bird dog, side plank, hanging leg raises. Hanging leg raises are really good. Okay, you know, you're hanging from a bar and you're raising your legs up, either your knees up or your legs up with straight legs. Right? And then you have ring rollouts or ab wheel rollouts now these are really good ring rollouts are really good um let me just link this but they are really hard as well so they would have to be to be done safely on the knees first and yeah okay i'm gonna catch up to these exercises and then because my throat is starting to get tired my voice is tired how weird huh i'm not cut out for this hosting business i don't know how radio hosts talk so much <clears throat> andre is asking best exercise to learn the muscle up are you talking about rings 
or bar. I have a video on, let me see where it is. I have a video on, uh, that's a good exercise for the bar. It's basically a foot supported. Let me find it here. Where is it? I must have passed it. I must have passed it. Let's start again. Why can't I find it? Anyway, I'm just going to type it. Foot supported muscle up. Okay. So I got two videos here. One is for the bar. Another is for the rings. Okay. So I'll just link these in the description. The rings. Muscle up and bar muscle up. So either of these foot, they're both foot supported exercises and they will help build strength, uh, transition strength in the transition, transition section of the muscle up, obviously. Okay. All right. Now, what else? Once you said you like stoicism, stoicism, not getting affected by negative things in life may improve life, but somehow I think you pass life by because you go through it without feeling anything. Any any thoughts? Um, I'm not sure actually. I don't really have any thoughts on this question. Um, what do you mean by you pass life by because you go like pass life by just in general like life is always passing by I'm not sure I'm not sure so bar oh Andre said that was in regards to the bar muscle up okay well you got it you got that and you got that exercise okay um can you do strength training and then after Afterwards, do a whole bunch of regular push-ups to increase your muscular endurance, or would that negatively impact your progress with strength? No, you could totally do that. So, like one thing I read—not read, but like I've seen uh, one guy do all the time—is that he ends every session with 25 push-ups and 25 rows, just like no matter what workout he did that day. At the end of it, he just busts out 25 push-ups and 25 rows. And that will help, you know, your endurance aspect. And it will also have a hypertrophy effect in the sense that, like, you'll, grow, you'll just gain more muscle mass probably because you're literally just doing a little bit more work. And the endurance aspect is improved. Okay. Uh, Sparkle Boy is asking, when did you start working out? Uh, I've always been active in general since uh, my teenage years. Uh, however, in regards to calisthenics, like gymnastics strength training specifically, uh, it's been a while now. It's been nine, nine years, I guess. Wow. I'm getting old, guys. I'm getting old. My birthday is in like two or three weeks. I'm getting older yes getting old is nice uh mayhem is asking still on yoga how often do you practice it um i'll do a little bit each day just like at least a few minutes of something but i'll try to take a class or do a really strong session myself once or twice a week so yeah that's about it you know i'll do it as i need it usually as well so if i need it more than I, you know, do it as needed. So I think I went over a lot of things. And 
one thing I will say is whether you're trying to work out or you're trying to start a business or gain a degree or you know learn something read a book or let's say you're slacklining you're trying to learn a new skill you're trying to like let's say create a website or create a youtube channel or whatever it is you're trying to do just know that little wins add up little wins little little bits okay like try to be consistent work on something even if it's daunting a little bit at a time so you know if you're trying to work out you're not going to get like swollen huge and like gain a bunch of strength by going super hard one week and then or one day and then like and then you're you like you're sore for seven days you know what i mean you need to be like consistent and that consistency builds momentum okay you got to be patient in every field no matter what you're in you have to be patient with the plan nature has for you you cannot control nature okay like when i released this uh, work from home fitness program i was working my ass off getting this ready right and i was in i had by the time it was released the night before my trip i had to go on a trip as so i had released it like the night before i had so much momentum with getting shit done that i started getting uh, doing things that i had put on the back burner for like months or weeks like there were things on my old to-do list that i hadn't done and i got rid of those even because i had so much drive so much momentum so it's like a snowball effect the snowball just keeps snowballs rolling down and getting bigger and bigger just start with little wins you know whether you know is this reply this applies to anything uh working out this applies to trading if you're day trading you know like little bits of profit add up so much and so forth okay so um yeah i think that's about it guys i don't know if you have any more questions i'll answer it is exercising getting harder every year for you no exercising is not getting harder i mean i'm in doing exercises that are more challenging for me appropriate amount of intensity i'm always challenging myself and making things harder it's never going to be easy if it's like an exercise the workout you're doing is easy it's not really a challenging workout anymore it's not going to get you anywhere so you're like a plant you're either growing or dying you got to like push you got to push the envelope, push the limits a little bit, get a little bit out of the comfort zone always. And life is a struggle, guys. What can I say? There's nothing like easy about life overall. I mean, it could be. We could just tell ourselves life is easy and then it'll be easier. But overall, it's a bit of a burden living, isn't it? <laughs> but to experience, you know, those highs, you got to experience some lows and yin yang, yin yang. Uh, I'm trying to learn how to L sit, but the top of my thighs always hurt. That's very normal. That's very normal, and it will go away the more you do it. And one of the things, I mean, this is like a this is like brutal advice, but if you can just do it, and your thighs, your quads are cramping, and you could endure through the cramping, just like psychologically, just say I'm gonna just keep doing it even though it's cramping, and you do that for a few sessions the cramping is going to be gone okay you just have to endure through that painful transition point and then the reason it's cramping is because your muscles are contracting and they don't have enough oxygen they're not strong enough in that contracted position and they're running out of oxygen and it's leading to this cramping feeling so eventually if you just keep at it endure through that pain um, they're going to be strong enough okay they're gonna then you're not gonna have that cramping anymore okay any advice on how to get noticed on youtube or on any platform for creative content 
that is nowadays YouTube is so saturated it is probably really difficult to have um, to set yourself apart from other people on any platform it's difficult one thing I would recommend is have the highest quality um, quality of video um, footage and editing that you can afford or learn be consistent with the content that you produce but do not sacrifice quality for quantity okay so you know I don't put out like there was a time where I was like I'm gonna make a video every week or twice a week like I told myself I'm gonna do it like no matter what and I started doing that and I realized like the content I wasn't happy with the quality of the content so it didn't make sense for me to just keep making content like even though I, it was not something if it's not something you're gonna be proud of like when you look back at it two years from now like do a better job okay and overall you gotta you have to not be boring i guess people have a very short attention span so you gotta like hook them in the first five seconds with a question with a you know like something like something enticing in that first few seconds to get them engaged and keep the video short cut cut fluff out whether you're making videos or whether you're writing like if your writing is full of fluff it's annoying right same thing with videos if you, the video is full of fluff you got to edit that stuff out even though i know it feels bad editing out your own self editing nice footage for you know sometimes you just gotta have the cream of the crop all right uh what's your opinion on probiotics like kombu kombucha i used to have kombucha i used to make it myself i think it just tastes pretty interesting and i don't know if it has any actual benefits and i just did it because it tasted cool like it was sort of a different kind of drink and i don't know if it has any you know positive or negative benefits so and do i take any supplements uh not really i was taking fish oil for a long time but i try to just eat fish once in a while now so that i don't have to take the supplement i used to take a multivitamin i sometimes still take i still have the multivitamins i sometimes still take them but not as consistently so overall no i don't take supplements um, I will have a protein bar once in a while if I know I haven't ate much protein because I, I do know that whenever I'm eating an appropriate amount of protein, my recovery is better, okay? And if you're not eating enough and especially not eating enough protein, it's, it's very easy to lose muscle mass. So that is, I guess, the supplement in that regard and we don't have any questions left guys so i've caught up to the scroll and i think i'm going to end it here i don't have anything else to say and i thank you all for watching just try to stay level-headed try to meditate for like five minutes a day i'm going to end the stream and i'm just going to go do nothing for five minutes right try to do nothing don't look at your phone just sit and do nothing and find the joy in doing nothing and if someone says what the hell are you doing it looks weird you're not doing anything well that's their problem guys all right see you guys later thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video bye